Welcome to Science with Tal. In today's video, I will discuss a particular disease of the eye called the CNG channel related retinopathy. To get situated, let's start by considering a ventral view of the brain and locate the eyes. Within the eye organ, we can find the retina, which is a cell layer at the back of the eye that is specialized in transducing incoming light information into neural signals to support our sense of vision. When it comes to retinopathies, there are a group of diseases that affect the retina, and as you can imagine, any retinopathy causes vision impairments. Diabetes and blood hypertension are some of the leading causes of retinopathies, but in this video, we will consider one particular genetic disease that comes from the mutation of CNG channels. To understand how this mutation affects the eye, it's first important to understand the context in which these proteins are relevant. To do so, we need to consider the retina in more detail, where we can find different types of cells forming complex networks. The cells of interest for us are the photoreceptors, and generally speaking, they represent the first line of light processing. Photoreceptors come in two flavors, rods and cones, and the two are morphologically and functionally distinct from each other. Due to certain properties and options that we will not explore in depth in this video, rods are specialized for night vision and cones for daylight and color vision. Now, we first need to understand how photoreceptors behave in the dark. The following mechanism that we will consider in rods is also applicable in cones. The first important thing to know in this mechanism is that in the dark, an enzyme by the name of guanylate cyclase continuously converts GTP to cyclic GMP, and in photoreceptors, CGMP is an intracellular ligand to the cyclic nucleotide gated channels or simply CNG channels. When CGMP binds and opens CNG channels, these channels let calcium and sodium enter the cell, and with sufficient depolarization, photoreceptors release glutamate to signal to their downstream partners. Now, when light enters the eye, individual photons of light can hit opsins, and this causes the receptor to change conformation and become active. Opsins are G-protein coupled receptors, and their activation allows the activation of a G-protein called transducin by exchanging the GDP of the alpha subunit to a GTP. This subsequently dissociates the alpha subunit from the beta and gamma subunits, and the now active alpha subunit can activate phosphodiesterase, which is an enzyme that hydrolyzes cyclic GMP into GMP. By depleting the pool of cyclic GMPs, CNG channels stay closed, so light essentially causes the hyperpolarization of the photoreceptor and decreased release of glutamate. Now that we understand this pathway, we can shift our focus on CNG channels and learn how mutations in their structure might interfere with this process and cause vision impairments. An important detail to mention is that CNG channels in rods and cones molecularly differ. The CNG tetramer in the rods is composed of three CNGA1 subunits and one CNGB1 subunit, whereas the CNG channels in the cones are made of three CNGA3 subunits and one CNGB3 subunit. This detail implies that CNG channel mutations can selectively impair either rods or cones, and indeed, mutations in rods CNG channels in either CNGA1 or CNGB1 subunits lead to a retinitis pigmentosa phenotype that is characterized by impaired night vision and visual field. Mutations in cones CNG channels in either CNGA3 or CNGB3 subunits lead to an achromatopsia phenotype that is characterized by poor visual acuity, a lack of color discrimination, photophobia, which is eye discomfort in bright light, or nystagmus, which are uncontrolled eye movements. As of yet, there are unfortunately no cures available to treat the mutations, but there are some upcoming avenues that show promise in possibly curing these genetic diseases. One such avenue is gene therapy, and to finish our discussion, I would like to give a brief intuition on this method. To do this, Let's consider how gene therapy could help cure a co-mutation of the CNGB3 subunit of CNG channels that causes achromatopsia. The virus used for this procedure is a small single-stranded DNA virus, known as an adeno-associated virus or simply AAV, and contains a functional copy of the CNGB3 subunit along with a cone-specific promoter to ensure specificity. To target photoreceptors, the virus is injected below the retina. Due to the cone-specific promoter, only cones will be able to read the virus and produce the relevant proteins to restore photoreceptor function. The use of AAVs for gene therapy is promising, as it is easy to produce on a large scale and it shows a good safety profile with low immunogenicity and low toxicity. An obvious downside of this procedure is that it can be very invasive. 
At the moment, gene therapy to cure CNG-related retinopathies is in clinical trials for some of the mutations, but is still in proof-of-concept studies for others. This final detail concludes our discussion on CNG-related retinopathies and potential cures for this disease. Thank you for watching this video. If there was anything unclear or there was a mistake somewhere in the video, make sure to let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, you can consider leaving a like and subscribing to support the channel. On the right, you will see the informational resources that I've used to produce this video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in our next discussion.